Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm sure everyone has a creative formula of which they like to follow for their craft. I think it's how we find our signature style and it distinguishes us from one another. As we get ideas and inspiration from those around us or from experience, methods change, we see what we like more or don't like. Today, I wanted to share my floral formula, the three very simple things I check when making stamped floral arrangements. Yes, there is a method for what I do when making floral arrangements. Every bouquet has its location for a reason, and a lot of this reasoning is based on linear and triangular composition. I will demonstrate these personal rules of composition with the Altenew August 2019 Build a Flower Bellflower release. The Build a Flower program is a monthly subscription offered by Altenew. Instead of the stamp costing you full retail price for the stamp and die bundle, your monthly contribution is at a reduced price, and you are guaranteed the next month's Build a Flower. I have an affiliate link all about the subscription service in the description box below. So here's the full stamp and die bundle. Build a Flower Bell Flower contains four to six layering components for a total of four images. I love that there is a variety of flowers in this release and using the right layering set creates a lot of drama in these flowers. And for easy coordination, the layering images are lettered and numbered so you never grab the wrong image for stamping. For this first example, I'm using Altenew Crisp Dye Inks in Cool Summer Night and Gentleman's Gray Family of Inks. Having a stamp positioning tool is helpful in layering these images, especially when you're making multiple panels. So you'll see me using one today for that reason. So I'll quickly arrange these images and stamp them using the family of inks I just mentioned. I'll also create a second panel using the Sweet Dream Family of Inks from Altenew, muting the leaves and other non-petal elements with Gentleman's Gray. I'm going to die cut all the images with the coordinating steel dies. Build a Flower subscription comes with this by the way, so no need to make a separate purchase. And now that I have both panels die cut, here's the tutorial part of this video. Here I'm showing you the finished card first so that you have an idea of what I'm working toward. I'm going to arrange these die cut images following these three very simple rules. One, I'm going to make sure I have an odd number of flowers. Odd numbers cause our minds to analyze a scene because we lose the ability to group them symmetrically. It's more dynamic, tense, and interesting. Two, I'm going to group the flowers in a triangle. Many sources cite a triangle as visual unity and our eyes are directed to the three implied points of the composition. If we are going to get technical about the shape of the triangle, I do prefer acute triangles. I like the sharp angles and personally I think they create a lot of height and exaggeration. And you'll see that the implied triangle does not have to be confined by the size of the card. I think having the shape fall outside the dimensions of the card creates interest as well. And three, I will tilt and angle the flowers so that the implied lines create movement from a single point. I'll make sure that one of these implied lines points to the sentiment or frames the sentiment in some sort of way. I take this opportunity to create movement in the arrangement. I like for the recipient's eyes to drift from side to side, admiring each individual flower and finally resting at the placement of the sentiment before moving on to the inside of the card. If this isn't clear at this point, I'll have other examples in this video. So keeping those three things in mind, I'll arrange the die cut flowers on a white A2 panel. And once I'm happy with the arrangement, I'll use my tried and true press and seal to make sure I don't lose the arrangement I worked so hard to put together. You'll see me using this template I made as well with the golden ratio. It's an entire video on its own for placement. But anyway, I'll place and stamp my sentiment using Obsidian Pigment Ink from Altenew. I love to use splatters with floral arrangements because I think they break up the rigidity of all the other linear elements I placed. I use Altenew Jet Black Ink Spray and a water brush about 98% of the time. Now I'll bring the floral arrangement back and use the press and seal as a hinge as I'm gluing everything down. What I mean by this is I will take a bit of the press and seal that overhangs from the arrangement and press it onto my work surface or card panel so that it sticks. I'm just using the existing tack from the press and seal to do so. Then I will carefully swing the rest of the press and seal like a book cover, exposing the backs of the die cut images so that I can put down glue on the entire piece. 
Now, I won't put glue on all the images, and I won't put glue all over the flowers either. I put glue closer to the stem of the flower so that I can curl up the rest of the flower to give it dimension. I won't glue the top two flowers because I want to use foam squares instead and raise them off the paper significantly. I'm still going to use the press and seal as a hinge while I'm doing this, so I never lose the original arrangement as I'm gluing. Okay, so here's the finished card front. Just to reiterate, I have a triangular arrangement, an odd number of elements, and there's linear movement in this arrangement. For this second example, I'm pairing the flowers with leaves. If your floral arrangement does not contain standalone leaves, I highly suggest you get the leaf cluster stamp set from Altenu. This coordinating stamp and die set completes many of my floral arrangements. I even mix this stamp set with other brands when I'm making cards at my own leisure. I use leaves to also create a second layer of triangular arrangements. As you can see, this implied triangle from the leaves opposes the implied triangle of the flowers, sort of like a hexagram. I'll do the same things as the first card with splatters and press and seal, and here's the finished card front. I ended up with three cards for this release, using all but one of the die cuts. You can see that this last example still encompasses my three rules that I follow, even if there aren't a lot of elements. You can definitely apply these guidelines to any of your projects. They don't necessarily have to be floral scenes. With that being said, let's review these three rules. I have these array of triangles in my floral arrangements to create visual unity. I have implied linear elements that radiate from a single point for movement, one of which points at the sentiment. And lastly, I have an odd number of floral elements to make the arrangement more dynamic and interesting. Hey, thank you so much for watching my tutorial on stamp floral linear composition. A lot of this theory is based on graphic design and also high renaissance artists such as Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Michelangelo, who have pioneered this sort of geometry within art and I've just sort of brought these ideas into card making. I hope you use these guidelines on your future Altenew projects, and if you do so, please make sure you share them with me over on Instagram, at jcgaspar, or linked below. I'd be more than happy to take a look at your project or answer any questions you might have. All of the Altenew materials I used are in affiliate links in the description box below. I always appreciate your support. Thank you so much to Team Altenew for the opportunity to design for them, and as always, I'll talk to you very soon, and have the best day.